a whole suite of new technologies have emerged and have allowed us to look at the ocean uh, in, in different ways and, and importantly over different time scales. Looking at new records of those, we've actually found that there are a number of additional pumps that we, we knew about in theory, but not really so much in practice. And, and these new data sets that have come through have shown uh, in, in, in unprecedented detail that these other pumps, which we actually call PIPs or particle injection pumps, are actually injecting carbon through both physical but also biological mechanisms uh, into the deep sea. And when we combine this conventional pump that works under gravity, the biological gravitational pump with these PIPs or particle injection pumps, lo and behold, we can now get very close to balancing the budget. And so in that case, it really represents a major step forward. The reason we're excited about this development is that uh, if you can't balance the budget in the ocean because you don't understand the processes that are actually driving or, or setting this map of the distributions of dissolved uh, carbon dioxide uh, in, in, in the ocean from top to, to bottom, then if the ocean carbon cycle is going to change, which is very likely uh, because of uh, anthropogenic uh, pressures and, and carbon pollution uh, in the atmosphere that's going into the ocean, then if, if, if we can't balance the books now, if we can't get a baseline, then it's going to make life very difficult in the future to actually work out if the ocean changes, will it be a bigger sink for carbon dioxide or maybe it'll be a smaller sink and that could be a feedback that plays into the whole, the whole uh, puzzle of working out how the Earth will respond to a, a climate that's changing at an unprecedented rate.